I go to feelings. How do I want that to feel? How do I want my life to feel like? Is that? Sure. She wants to know. She she goes to feelings of what do I want my life to feel like? Yeah. What do I, in other words, do I want to be joyful? What does that feel like? So that I can be more aware of I'm not there. In other words, that is that I'm out of sync with that. Okay, um, and that's certainly a lovely way to go. Uh, a lot of people are more physically oriented. And they need to see, I really need a new car. You know? Well, what would that feel like? I feel safe, I'd feel relaxed, I could drive to and from work without having to worry, you know. So you can you can apply that to a physical thing as well. Okay. Yes. It's all good. It's all good. So let's just open our awareness now and take a deep breath in. And exhale. <laughs> Another deep breath in, and exhale. One more deep breath in, and exhale. <clears throat> Allow yourself to find your center, the center of your being, the core of who you really are. It's not really a physical aspect of yourself, but you may have a sense of it within your physical form. And as you're aware of that, from the core of your being, allow yourself to be aware that there are energy portals at the bottoms of your feet. Let's not do that though. And as you're aware of those energy portals at the bottoms of your feet, if you're mindful of them, they'll open. And as they open, heavy, dense energy of fear and doubt, sorrow and loss can just drain out the bottoms of your feet. At the same time, you can send an anchoring energy, an anchoring thread of awareness deep into the earth. As you're sending this thread into the earth, you can tie it onto a very large rock beneath the surface. Maybe it's crystalline structure. Maybe it has a color. Maybe it's amethyst or topaz or some other crystalline structure. Whatever you're experiencing is what is right for you. And allow that thread of light to remind you that you're a physical being. You're walking in a physical form. And as you've done that, now bring your attention up that thread back to your core. And bring your attention to the top of your head. There's an energy portal there. As you're mindful of that, as you're aware of that, that also opens like the eye of a camera. As that opens, this opens your connection to divine source, whatever that might be for you, whatever word you use for that. And divine source will meet you here. You will have a sense of this beautiful living light of love flowing down and creating a thread from divine sources, from heavenly realms, down into this portal, down through your body, and it will anchor into your heart space. So you have a thread going into the earth, and you have a thread coming from heaven, 
in the heavenly realms, the ethereal realms. And now there is a, a question or a concern, a worry or a fear that's been on your heart, maybe a situation you're not really sure what to do with, a concern. And hold that concern in your heart space and send a pulse down into the earth and a pulse up into the heavens. And know that you've been heard. Now Divine Source can cause this physical realm to shift in your behalf. And see an echo now returning back from the heavenly realms back into your core. So as you pulsed out, and that pulse is coming back. And let that energy feed into your physical form. Let it touch your mind. Clarifying your purpose for you. Your purpose in each moment because your purpose may change from moment to moment. Let that clarify for you your willingness. Now let it flow down into your throat, give you the ability to speak your truth. Be able to hear someone else's truth, you don't have to make it yours. Your truth will have precedence. Let that light feed your heart space. So they will amplify your intent. Energize your intent. Energize that hope and that belief. Let it flow down into your belly area. Giving you the courage to move forward. Giving you the connections to move forward. Let it flow down through the rest of your body, through your legs. And let it find its way to that thread that's anchored into the earth. And now feel another pulse of energy flow from heavenly realms through your body, deep into the earth. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. And feel a new pulse of energy from heavenly realms through your body, through your core, through that thread down into the earth. And now while that is functioning, while that is anchoring you into this physical plane, as a living being, and while that is anchoring you into the spiritual realms, because you're a spiritual being that's inhabiting and living in this physical form, while that's doing its work, let's take a little walk in our imagination. Allow yourself to find your way onto a pathway And notice what the pathway feels like. Is it rugged? Is it smooth? Is it well-traveled? What does your pathway look like? What does it feel like to you? Know that it may have spiritual significance for you. On one side of your pathway, there will be trees. And on the other side of your pathway is open field. And notice whether you're Trees are on your left, or the trees are on your right. Which one carries the open field? Does that may have spiritual significance for you. And your path 
continues on down around a curve, down a hill, up the other side of the hill. And when you get to the crest of the next hill, you stop. And laid out before you is a beautiful panoramic view of the valley below. There's farmland, city, highways, maybe animals that are grazing in the grass. Whatever you see is whatever you're experiencing. And now you're at a point of choice. You can choose to move into the farmland, to go towards the farmland, or you can choose to go to the city. Either choice is all right. Either choice is appropriate. Just what feels right to you right now. And it may have spiritual significance for you. And as you begin to descend the hill on your pathway towards either the city or towards the farmland, you notice that there's a tree along the way. A big tree. Perhaps it's an oak tree or a pine tree. Very large tree. And you decide to just sit in the shadow or the shade that this tree offers. Maybe there's a bench there. Maybe there's just a, a fallen log or a rock or maybe just moss. So you find a comfortable place to sit. And as you just sit and you realize that you haven't reached your destination yet, and it's okay. And you don't know what's there for you, and it's okay. And you feel safe with not knowing. Because you know you've made your choice. You're on your way. And as you're pondering these things, you look down next to you, and there's a symbolic object laying right there that has been left here for you. Perhaps it's a piece of jewelry or a stone or a tool. Whatever you're experiencing is what is right for you. Perhaps it's something really absurd, and that would be all right too. And when you receive that, you have a sense that it's important for you to mark this as sacred ground. You want to leave something here as a token, as a symbol, that you acknowledge this is sacred ground. Perhaps you want to leave a word, or a thought, or a feeling, or some symbolic object. Leave that here to signify your sacred ground. And after you've left that symbolic object, allow yourself to Continue on your pathway, but your pathway doesn't lead you to the city or to the farmland. The pathway actually leads you back into the here and now, back into this time and space. It's like you step through that vision back into the here and now, back into your physical form, aware of the clothing that you're wearing, wearing of the place that you're sitting. Might want to take a deep breath in. Stretch a little bit. Wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. I'm going to let you sit with that for just a bit. Mr. Phil, if you would assist me, please, sir. Communion is a physical manifestation of, thanks Nancy, of that spiritual connection we just experienced. We have unleavened bread, if you like the tradition of that. Animal crackers, if you'd like to honor a Native American pathway. And in this cup is gluten-free. So whatever works for you works for us. Would you join us in prayer, please? 
loving spirit of light to help us to recognize that we stand on sacred ground. Help us to realize that sacred ground is with us always. Walk with us in all things. Help us to stand sacred ground. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are we good, Nancy? Join us in prayer again, please. Loving spirit of light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life, all of it. Help us to recreate for ourselves new belief, the new power of our intent the power of creation. Help us to be in the flow. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. No, we're okay. losing my mind. It's just weird. We all place different value on the experiences that we have here, but there is value. And there's value in this as well, because what it does is help us continue this experience. So as it goes around, pray if you can, give if you will, and be blessed. Does anyone have any questions or comments about their guided meditation? And where's my... Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, thanks. Oh, we're going to have to do it this way. Oh. You come up here. I just have a question. Um, what's the difference between sacred ground and sacred space? Is there a difference? That's a really good question. Um, I don't know that there's a difference. I don't know that there's a difference. Feels the same to me, doesn't it? Yeah. Sacred space is when you create the technology. Hmm. It makes sense. What is wrong with this microphone? No, I'm, Jan, I'm trying to figure out if I'm doing it. Okay. <coughs> any, any other questions? Yeah, I would believe that. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Questions or comments? I'll walk this one back. 
We have a wired mic somewhere. <laughs> Not that it's so much I have questions, just want to tell you what I saw. Um, at first I thought I was on a path uh, towards the ocean because it was sandy and very smooth. And then I saw the trees, which were on my left. And when I got to the area where you could oversee, um, I thought I was going to head into the city. There was an open air market and I was kind of excited. But the tree was very inviting. And so as I sat down by the tree, this teddy bear, oh, on my way, someone handed me a shaft of wheat and said, you're going to need this. And so, okay, anyway, I got to the bench and there was a teddy bear that just kept popping up and showing its face and making me laugh and made me think of my uh, baby brother that I lost years ago because we always called him Bear. He always looked like a bully or, you know, really gruff, but had such a great heart, you know. We lost him a long time ago. But before I left, I left the shaft of wheat there. And I felt really good that I'd had that moment, you know, of joy with him. So, um, shaft of wheat often represents a productivity. The fact that the trees were on your left, correct? Uh, this is, you've already gone through the hardship. It gets to be easier from here. Okay, so if the trees were on your right, there's some big stuff coming up. Doesn't have to be bad. It's just know that you're not going to see as clearly. You're, you have, how many people have the trees on their right? Oh, crud. Um, <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll chat later then. Um, so your, if the trees are on your right, this is just letting you know that big stuff is happening and you're not going to know, you're not going to be able to see really, really clearly from here to there. So just know that you're, you're especially going to be Im Im imperative for you to walk each day in faith and trust and navigate that because you you may not know from one minute to the next or one day to the next what things are going to look like. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Um, your sandy pathway, the smooth pathway, again, it's going to be easy. The, it's harder to walk in sand, I think, sometimes, you know. So this is asking you to go slowly. You can't walk fast in the sand. So take it easy, go slowly, and have fun. Make life about love and, and joy in your connections with people. Um, and know that, again, the sweet representing the productivity. You've done the hard work, so now you get to j just take it easy, be kind to yourself, and have some fun. Sound good? Yes, ma'am. I didn't have a tree my path was white rocks and um, I didn't have a tree it was a meadow and a, a fawn with spots on it came right up to me and sat there with me and there was an egg acorn sitting there and the fawn followed me back down the path So fawns often have to do with, well, first of all, your white, white rocks. Uh, this, is, this is recognizing for you that you're walking, you're definitely walking sacred ground. You're right on the right path. The white is purity. <coughs> keep, keep your thoughts and keep your actions pure. You're doing the, what you need to be doing right now. Um, fawn is about gentleness and tenderness and, and care. It also has the potential for you know, they get to be strong when they grow up and all of that sort of thing. But they're very, um, they're about kindness. So this is asking you to be kind to yourself and being kind to others. So it's bringing that gentleness uh, into your soul and on a whole nother level. Uh, and you left an acorn <coughs> or received an acorn. Okay, so the acorn is about potential, you know, from a mighty... A mighty oak will grow from a small acorn. So this is knowing that every kindness that you do has a big payoff. You may not get to see it down the road, but that's not your business. That's up to God. Your kindness is making a difference. And just know that. 
Does that make sense? Okay. One, let's get a couple up here. Hi. Um, I was on an orchard road mm -hmm. and my trees were on the right and my field was on the left and I came to this big oak tree that had a tree house oh, in it. So I climbed up into the tree house and sat there and meditated for a little bit and then got down and there was a cross at my feet and I carved my name in the tree. That's what I left. Awesome. Okay. So, a lot's going on with that. The tree house represents, or it feels to me it represents, you have to check with your inner ring true to make sure it feels right to you, but it feels like this is your childlike wonder. Like some aspect of your childhood, you didn't get to play as much, or, or play was just not allowed. Um, so you get to reclaim that childlike wonder, that joy of living. So that's being brought back to you. Um, <coughs> when you got down, what it was that you found? I'm sorry. Across at, my feet. Across at your feet. Okay, so this is just confirming your faith for you, that that's really going to be supportive uh, for you on your journey. And carving your name, you're going to leave a legacy. You will not be forgotten. You came here to do some stuff, and you will do it. Does that make sense? You're right? Okay. My path was kind of set up in, in two different segments. I mean, it was all the same thing, but the, the first part of it, I had trees on both my left and my right, but the majority of them were yellow. But the thing that stood out to me was that on my left, I had a tree full of um, very red, very rich, rich red leaves. And then when I got down to the end of that, I guess that aisle is when the path was just open and heading down into the valley off to my right. And then before you had even said anything about an oak tree, it was a giant oak tree. And sitting down at the bottom was just a little squirrel and he gave me an acorn and I gave back a little pink ribbon like a it was tied into a bow it almost kind of reminded me of like the little bow that they glue on the baby's head at the hospital and that's what I gave back Okay. so um, the fact that your trees on the left were yellow no, they, were red, bright red. they were bright red mm -hmm. and then the ones on the right and everywhere else Everywhere else was yellow. Okay, let me check on that for you. So yellow is joy, so it's a lot of joyfulness. Um, the red and the joy both have to do with um, fall. So you're, you're letting go of some things that you don't need anymore. Uh, the red, the bright crimson uh, color, this is about, um, and it's, that was on your left? Okay, so there's some things that you maybe have gotten fired up about in the past that you're no longer necessarily needing to get fired up about. So you can kind of, again, let them go. Just be aware of them. There's nothing wrong with uh, old dreams or hopes or passions or whatever. Just know that they're, they're there and they're moving on and you're ready for something new. And then you step out into the open space. Um, you found an acorn and left pink bow okay so the acorn again is about this potential you're ready to do whatever you need to do and you've got all the tools that you need are coming to you as you need them uh, and the little pink bow uh, again this is about innocence this is about a new beginning about uh, new thought and because it's a bow that would go in a, a baby's head this is a new thought uh, that is going to guide everything else and the pink has to do with unconditional love, um, that, that sense of, when we say the word unconditional love, unfortunately that sets a lot of us up for uh, enabling. <laughs> so this is not the enabling kind of love, this is I will love you no matter what, but here's my boundary. Yeah. So it's loving, but with a safe, safe clear boundaries um, and having that love gifted back to you. So you'll be loved and be loved. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Okay. 
So we have several more, but we're just about out of time. Uh, why don't you see me after?